Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, a segment where we analyze the day's headlines. Uh, Mr. Chris Owandu, publisher of CKN News, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning to you, sir. Let's begin with the Daily Sun newspaper. The headline reads, um, 2023, Northern Leaders, OK, Southeast, Northeast, North Central. Ohaneze disagrees with Governor Bello on rotational presidency as Ikwerimadu advocates single term. France page editorial, no to anti-media bills. Nigeria's democracy better off with free press. That's according to Governor Fayemi. Also, COVID-19, some Olu charges immigration to watch travelers. Cooking gas price rises by 22.2%. 12.5 kg cylinder may hit 10,000 naira. Again, National Assembly complex flooded after downpour. In Namdi Kanu's trial, federal government welcomes Ohanese monitoring team. And those are the ones from the Daily Sun. All right, moving on now to the uh, Punch newspapers. So we can find over here the big one. There it says uh, manufactured imports increased to 41 trillion naira. Nigeria exports 4 trillion naira worth of goods. Second-hand vehicles, motorcycles, vaccines, antibiotics dominate Nigeria's imports. Our goods are of high standards, but environmental constraints drive up costs, say um, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Also, federal government halts refineries privatization, says Ajaukota steel problem is complex. Bandits expose seam NIN linkage failure. Police can't track gunmen. Also on the pond this morning, petrol subsidy ends after Buhari signs PIB, says Minister. And Bajabia Bila queries media bills sponsor reps to remove contentious clauses. Someone we'll lose convoy catches Lagos traffic offenders in uh, traffic robbers rather in operation. And also experts warn against fresh lockdown over COVID-19 third wave. Super, boss, uh, super TV boss, Chidima makes a U-turn. Police may deploy lie detector. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Southwest governors demand state-controlled minimum wage, stamp duty, and prisons. And also, Senate decides on a chair's fate today. Wiki con uh, condemns nomination. 2023, Ohaneze attacks Billu. Uh, governors insist rotational presidency unconstitutional. All right, I think uh, these are the... Okay, well, there's uh, this one here. Ireland-based fans take down Babai Jesha's GoFundMe page following outrage. Those are the stories on the punch. Um, lastly, in the Guardian newspaper, Nigerians borrow to feed as food prices soar amid stagnated income. Ten feared killed, houses raised, and fresh Kaduna attack. So all the orders arrests of three traffic robbers... Onoche's appointment as INEC Commissioner Badge for Democracy says Wiki. Oyo begins contact tracing of index Delta variant records to death. And an editorial on the same lines as the other papers. Who is afraid of free press? Mr. Wanda, good morning again. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Mr. All right. Um, okay. I think we can still throw in the nation um, or one other paper. Mr. Wando, I think we can kick off right after uh, this. There's something on the nation here. It says, INEC job, hope dims for nominees on Oche and Adam. Uh, DMO offers uh, 150 billion federal government bonds. Oshun gets 69 caretaker council chairmen. APC to begin Congresses on July 13th, or 31st, I beg your pardon. Um, media don't want to be regulated, says uh, Bajabia Mila. And also, Hanez and North Central leaders clash over power shift. Um, PDP urges courts to sack J Zamfara governor. And uh, lastly, abducted uh, Amir of Kajuru released. Welcome once again. Go ahead, Mr. Wandu. Yes, um, Mr. Wandu, uh, which means uh, it's critical. Um, for the first time, it doesn't take a man out. And that is the arrest of um, armed robbers or criminals at Lagos State Government. Um, yesterday, some in Ojota uh, is a welcome development of um, 
there is some criticism on social media guys that say, oh, it's easy to arrest um, robbers or what is it? Is it that he doesn't have a job or whatever? Until you become a victim, you don't know how important you want to not yesterday. Myself, um, about two ago, I had almost had an encounter or an encounter with those same uh, hoodlums along that stretch. I was just coming from um, TBC, uh, where I went to uh, regularly, just as I'm doing with uh, uh, Lost TV now. And on my way, I'm just about nine years, and I was confronted by hoodlums. Um, on that stretch, within the auto gate, uh, seven up, and uh, the the stretch, uh, they they just they keep themselves along with there, and they just uh, pick them vehicles uh, randomly and attack them. So um, the Lagos State Police uh, Command tried to deploy uh, some these men around that area, and I don't think it's deterring the, them from doing what they are doing. Uh, one of the reasons for the consistent attack, especially on that page, is the, the, the construction of that group. Um, that in itself a lot of great luck. Um, and that's from Oto Gate to Obu to uh, inward uh, uh, um, Third Mainland Bridge. So, uh, you can see the machete, it's not just the government machete, some of them who have guns. And uh, if they call us for when they don't want, they just move up, smash your screen or your mirror and attack you. Um, I think we should deploy more uh, policemen along that as it's, And it is also happening along the uh, Osho, the upper expressway, heading towards uh, uh, my two. Um, so it's commendable. Now that the governor has it himself, I'm sure that something will be done about it. Um, really, we hope something should be done about it because, I mean, if the governor and his convoy were not passing that route, we only can imagine what would have happened to that man, you know, or the victims of that particular guy brandishing that machete. So, indeed, we do need more policemen deployed along the roads. You know, we see them at some checkpoints and you know what the police would definitely expect of you, asking you for tips and bribes. So, yes, we do need people, more policemen, on that stretch of the road. And uh, on the Daily Sun newspaper, there's a story here that we see. It's a reaction of the Northern leaders uh, to the meetings that the leaders in the South have been having. And basically here, they say they've reached a consensus to say that, you know, um, the president in 2023 should come from the Southeast, the Northeast, or the North Central. But they say that their emphasis should be on the North Central because according to them, most of Nigeria's presidents from 1999 have been from the South. Um, how do you see this, seeing as Ohanese is now disagreeing with this rotational presidency issue with some Governor Bill? Well, I don't know why the Northerners um, uh, believe that they have the sole right to determine who of Nigeria president. It's not their right. Nigerians can determine. But uh, a little more than that, the political parties, according to uh, what we read, as I did tonight, I'm uh, 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 not that, I wasn't that uh, the opposite. Uh, unlike a particular government that we started to have to have uh, uh, been with the university. In 1999, I was uh, already years out of the university. I knew what happened. I knew that there was a, 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 a gentleman I mean, between the South, the South, the South and the North, then that the presidency should be rotation after the North should move to the South. So, uh, what the northern leaders are giving is um, like it in another north of north. President Buhari have had his year of um, going to have his special eight years after 2023, and automatically the presidency ought to go back to the south. But it also depends on the political parties. Not also forget that some of the questions are speaking from so the south. Don't know where time, President. The APC are normal party where to stay in that. We are the only president to the south, but neither are the DP come out to say that they are zoning their presidency to the south. Those are the two dominant parties. I don't know what other political parties are saying. But um, the southern governors are not, uh, and also came out uh, to stem to stand firm that next president must come from the south, which means that irrespective of the political any political party, probably of the two dominant parties, that comes up with the pressure. Uh, candidate from the South, probably the outputs. So that is a bet. 
Uh, it's still early, or what it is as we say. One day is too short, one two or two. Let's see how it goes. For me, I don't think any, any uh, leader can start from the North and come out and say, tell me where the president should go. President Buhari, uh, as I mentioned in Charlie, has taken the turn the North for eight years. Um, so every day and fair play, uh, so it is that um, and we should go to the South. All right. Well, let's see, you know, there's always going to be, you know, that, like you mentioned, it's a gentleman's agreement. It's not necessarily in the Constitution. Uh, so let's see how, you know, politics and, um, you know, political interests will play out with the next elections. Let's also quickly speak with regard to security now. The Emir of uh, Kajuru, who has uh, regained freedom, if you remember, over the weekend, was kidnapped along with 13 others, I believe. Um, you know, what's your reaction to that? As it is, um, the uh, problem with the uh, Emir of Kaju was released, and the, the, the very um, annoying part of it is uh, when I saw the video of the man crying when he released the people that knew going on, I'm sure you must have seen it. Yeah, the man was an old man crying, and um, that to me stopped me. Um, he has been released, but I don't know. Other 13 or 14 members of families have also been released, and those are still in captivity now. I heard that negotiation is going on. I hope they also be released. But just as it's been released, more people are still sticking out and they're being adopted in the, in the north, that part of the country, and that will be the problem of insecurity across the nurse as well. And then um, our security agents will be handicapped and don't know what to do again. Change the, system, the service chiefs, change them. Uh, Inspector General of Police, um, and that not to be um, happening, and that to me is worrisome. And as I always say, that points to leadership. Probably we don't have leadership because we don't have the things it takes or the ability to handle the level of insecurity as we were. And uh, those who are in that sector, they do not have any matter of chances. To me, uh, the governor of Kaduna State, don't forget that Kaduna State, as it will have become the bedrock or hotbed of insecurity um, in the country now. And that to me is very, very good. And uh, by the last count, the United Nations, the UN, came out with a report, um, I think last week, or uh, that, that we had we have about 950 school children that we have kept or adopted in the, in, the, in the north. And that to me is very, very worrisome. We still have about 121 from the Better College. And uh, that we are conducting has been done about that. So, but it's good news that and they have been uh, released, and I hope that that's also the release of that. Okay. Okay, so um, still talking about security matters, um, we saw that on the Punch newspaper. The story here about how Nin Sim linkage basically isn't, you know, helping in solving crime in Nigeria. Uh, the story reads, bandits expose Sim Nin linkage failure police can't strike gunmen. So it basically is a story where, you know, the punch basically chronicles experiences of people who have had loved ones kidnapped and they basically gave the number of the, ba the number of the bandits to the police. I mean, this is the number that the bandits used to contact them. They gave those numbers to the police, but they did nothing about it. I mean, they chronicled about three or four stories of different people who had different experiences and just got experts to, you know, give their thoughts on this. And they basically said that this NINSIM linkage has done nothing to improve security because even though the police have the number of the bandits where they can easily check, you know, what name was this SIM registered in and easily, you know, find their address and try to apprehend them, that nothing, nothing really was done. So do you think we still need to give this SIM NIN um, process more time or should the police already, uh, be, you know, be working to make sure that they apprehend criminals um, using this new NIN process? Well, some of us we are very scared to find the name of communication words. So, uh, uh, I will use the word help it. Uh, pardon my language. Um, or maybe short term engineer, uh, they are not linked. Uh, or regions. Well, no my that to be in the world to go You can't get into the US and to know but once I I get into the say no uh, foreign countries and I want to buy the person now be asked before I go back. Is to present my entire thoughts and the uh, necessary documentation and back issue uh, 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 is scan. And the same thing is supposed to have, the essence of it is for security purposes and other. But 
Probably our citizens don't have to go back. And don't forget that the new material is still that. The national still have to go back to 8 billion naira. Uh, NIA, National Interest Agency, of money to be used to observe yes. calls, messages, and to separate that. So, yes, good. So, um, that is going to help is what we don't know. Um, when the our security agencies, I don't know about this, the DHS, the military is to it. And the current agencies, uh, we need to make a uh, uh, Build more capacity of technology. That is the way to go. Um, just share with of putting soldiers in the field and policemen on the field do not help matters. Most countries spend largely on intelligence gathering, gathering, and it's the only thing that they add. And that is how they go. Um, is the best. And that um, the neutral tactics, the better now, you still find out that. This uh, banding and kidnappers also spoke them to contact to tell you where to draw money, to tell you where to bring the rest of them. And those are the, the, those are supposed to be money, and I don't know we'll not be able to do that. Is it that the securities are overwhelmed by what they are thinking, or they don't have the technical know? This is where the Minister of Education and not the Prime Okay, can you um, maybe just do a, like a one minute to quickly speak on the. Uh, fate of uh, Loretta Onoche uh, should be decided today. If you can do that in one minute so we can wrap up. The fate of um, Loretta Onoche should be fate at the I accompli as I do say, and so many people are going across the board. Even some of the people within the ruling party of the she is uh, she's going to be a, a, a dark horse, or a uh, not dark horse, to be a short thumb in the, in, in the finger of the and then don't forget former chairman of the uh, chairman of INE at I read you came up with the statement that uh, Loretta should be uh, 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 a national should not be approved by the Senate and I hope this Senate do a bit well and just beyond the should go down parties uh, part and politics so that all the effort of the federal government towards making a uh, very, very independent thing, irrespective of whatever she says, she's no longer a member of the PC and the rest of them. The various um, information coming out, you know, she has shown that she is a member, and there are others who have not to make her look like a neutral person when it comes to the uh, issue of um, election partisanship, and that is not good one. And I hope that she should not happen. But in Nigeria, as you say, the Chinese policy, anything can happen. So we're ready for anything that can happen. <laughs> All right. All right, Chris Wanda, thank you so much for your t uh, thoughts and your time this morning. Thanks for sharing with us. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much. Do have a nice day. Yeah, and you please too, stay safe. Stay safe on All the right. roads. I also, um, you know, just quickly mention, I don't, th I don't think any bandit was going to drop his gun one day and go stand in line with the NIMC to get his... Uh, uh, SIM card registered and uh, also call uh, any of the telcos and say I want to link my, my so, SIM. So, well, well <laughs> so, maybe what really happens sure is, you know, they usually steal people's people's phones and maybe that's what they use. That's that's one of the challenges. You know, when someone has registered their lines yeah. and a bandit steals it and uses it to perpetrate crime, you know, how then can they be able to distinguish? Because you can go arrest someone, someone innocent. That's even if the police did their due, due diligence to trace the SIM. So these issues really come up and, you know, just like he says, we need lots of investment in our, you know, security um, um, infrastructure, basically. I think when we're serious, we would get these things solved. When, mm -hmm. when we as a, when, uh, when the nation itself is serious about ending some of these challenges, they <clears> will end it. <throat> you know, for now, we, we, a lot of times we just play to the gallery, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, basically just dance around without actually achieving anything. But when we're serious, we will. Anyway, we'll take a short break. We're going to go back in time now and share with you some things that happened on this day many years ago. I'm going back just to the year 2013. I'll be back after the short break.